I would like to start uh, with apologize. On my last talk, I showed this picture. Uh, I said that my mother was a horse, and this is a picture of me, which was obviously uh, not the truth. So I want to apologize if anyone finds it disturbing. This is not me. This is actually my brother. <laughs> so sorry for not being honest with you guys. All right. Uh, Sean Wong said at 7 uh, <laughs> p.m. <laughs> so Sean Wong said earlier today, if you want to learn and build it, so what, that's what I'm going to do. It also said live coding is a bad idea. So I'm going to live coding today, uh, the thing that I want us to build. All right. You're familiar with him, yeah? But let's start with a productivity tip. Just like, let's take two minutes. Uh, a lot of people ask me uh, uh, which IDE they use. So it's like a huge uh, war between uh, um, VS Code and uh, Webson. Who uses VS Code, by the way? Yeah, yeah, that's a problem. All right, so I, I, <laughs> I, use, I use WebStorm, all right? I think that's the most mature professional JavaScript editor out there. It's not that expensive like you think it is. It's just like five bucks a month, which is not, not such a big deal. Uh, but I, I, I will say something nice about uh, VS Code. Um, what is the best way to lose weight? Someone? No, no, depression. Depression, that's the best way to lose weight. Now, if you, <laughs> if you want to get into depression, you can use Visual Studio Code. So that's actually a good thing. And if you like the, the full developer experience, we're talking a lot about user experience, you can try to run it on a Windows machine. <laughs> All right? So uh, again, if you're trying to lose any weight, please use VS Code. Let's talk about React context. So back to uh, Sean, All right? <laughs> Live coding is a bad idea. Uh, so I've got here uh, just a simple React, uh, React app app, All right? Uh, who use Redux? Just to know. Great. So let's start with the standard. I'm going to create a store.js file. We keep it simple. We focus on the, on the feature. So I'm going to import uh, React. Actually, I don't really need React. What I want to do, I want to create um, a init state with just, let's say, my name. Too much beers. <laughs> yeah. That's why it's going to be funny. Now, uh, I'm going to import um, create store from Redux and let's export store. For a reducer, now I just pass an inline function. Let's return the init state. Nothing fancy, all right? The usual stuff. Now, back to my index. If you want to use uh, React Redux, like we all do, you probably use the React Redux adapter. Is there anyone who's using something else for this? That you want to choose, all right. So we've got this wrapper component called provider. We can provide a store. Yep, and I think that's it, unless you're seeing a problem right here. Where? 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 Here it is. Yeah, found it. Found it. So we wrap everything with provider. Let's go inside our app. We do the usual stuff. I'm going to create a map uh, props, map state to props, which accept the state, and return an object name. Can be state.name. And again, from Redux, React Redux, let's take the connect function and wrap everything with it. Wait. All right. So now, as we all know, we've got our name on the props. So if I didn't miss something, I can do this, this props name, and I'm expect to see 
my name. That's fine, all right? Yeah, amazing, <laughs> amazing stuff. Yeah, but, but I'm, a, I'm a big believer in life coding, so I'm saying even if, it's, if, it, even if it's the basic stuff, let's try completely from scratch. Like I said, no, nothing was um, prepared, all right? Uh, let's talk about the context APIs. But we will talk with code. So I'm going to create, instead of React Redux, I'm going to create my version of, of React Redux adapter. Let's call it uh, Rainier. Straight from React, I'm going to import React, and I'm going to import the create context function. Now I'm going to create a context. I'm going to use the create context. And let's split the screen, open up our index.js file, wrap this. You can follow, I don't know if you can see it, but you can see the shortcut uh, which I'm using uh, on the bottom of the screen. It has nothing to do with our demo. So let's start with our provider component. Uh, it's supposed to be a simple component. So let's export provider, which will be a simple component. And Let's pass props, but I don't care about uh, most of the props. I care about the store, and I care about the children. Make sense? Now I'm going to use the context that I just created. To build a component, the CTX provider component. Right here, I'm going to just render the children. And for the provider component, I'm going to pass as a value the store. Make sense? Just a wrapper component. Actually, I could use the same code right here on my index file, but I want to keep it separate. I want to keep it clean. I want to keep it reusable. Uh, let's see if it works. Let's replace with my code from Rainier. Let's take my provider. It's not gonna work right now because we've got the connect right here. It's gonna fail, all right? So let's build the connect. Now the connect is a little bit tricky. I mean, it's a strange signature, it's a function. We're calling this function with our function, with our map say to props which is a plain function that return an object. And then on the second round, we call this function again with our component. And all of this should return a component. And a component is a function by itself. So it's a function that returns a function that returns a function. Amazing. Functional programming. So uh, I've got a function. Here uh, I will have my map state uh, function. All right, makes sense. And then I will return a function that accepts the original component. And then I will return a function which is the actual component. All right? Now, I'm going to use the context to create a consumer. When you create a consumer component inside of it, you pass a callback function. This callback function allows you to access this value that you provide to your provider, which means I'm just building a higher order function that wrap my component with this CTX consumer component. Make sense? All right. So here I can gain access to the store function. I want to return the original component but I want to spread the props. I want to take what this function returns, this map props, which returns just a plain object, and spread it on my new component, my old component, my wrapped component. Make sense? The code will look something like this. I'm going to call this function. 
map state function, which is this function, I need to provide the state. It will return an object which I'm spreading on my wrapped component. So I need to pass a state, store, get state. Let's try to replace disconnect with my connect. And if everything worked by the plan, almost, right? We got everything working. Cool. Ah, yeah. That's no reason. So, let's go through the code. The context in React was there from the beginning. It just got a nicer API. Actually, it's a kind of design pattern, the provider-consumer. The React uh, Redux library using, used the context from the beginning. We've got this global store object. We want to pass it to our, to our uh, child components. We use just simple functions. Take a look at this code. Very simple, very straightforward. We can use it for a lot of other things as well. All right? Who learned something new about context today in this session? Like this? Where? Uh, line, six. line six here? Yeah. yeah. But you, never told value you, you don't. So the question is here I passed value to the provider, yeah. but I, like, I never used it here. Actually, this value, you can call it XXX if you like, this is the value that you pass. So it's, it's, like it's a callback it's function. Only. Yeah, optional. Yeah, you can call it whatever you like. I mean, the value is necessary. The value is part of the API. You pass a value, but then in the callback function as an argument, you get an access to this value. So I don't need to use the same name. The name got no meaning, all right? You can call it XXX. You can call it something less sleazy. <laughs> if you like. That was context. Just like all the other new features in React, simple, straightforward, and like Sean uh, used to say before he passed away in 2017, that um, you should build it. Instead of just using features, try to mimic it. <laughs> you just understand the joke. Yeah. My bad English, sorry. Uh, Troubles, I've got uh, something special for you. Right? So, how do you identify a view developer? You heard about this, uh, this uh, view thing? Framework named view? So a 